I'm here with Clayton. Hey, everyone. Ilolachia. Wow, good pronunciation. Thank you. <laughs> my, uh, it's still filming, even though it turns off. Okay. It saves batteries. Um, my perfume guru, <laughs> <laughs> who also sent me the wonderful book that I posted also on Instagram. Yes. Uh, what's the book called again? It's Perfume Legends 2 by Michael Edwards. It's the Perfume Legend, and, and then we have the subtitle. <laughs> the subtitle female fragrances oh so. yes yeah yeah french feminine fragrances <laughs> yeah exactly which is, yeah yeah so you guys listen i was i just gave uh, clayton the og the mm-hmm. og version yes. of um, um christian dior's from the collection Privé, uh colonne blanche yes and let's see yeah well i think first of all this is i guess how we really started talking to each other it was that yeah. this was the conversation piece right yeah and smelling it uh it's you were saying that it takes you back to your clubbing days, early 2000s. Mm, For me, totally. I was living in Melbourne when I first smelled this. Actually, only a couple of blocks from here, there was a small boutique that uh, carried the Dior Homme ready to wear and they had the three colognes. So I smelt it there for the first time. So I feel like I'm back in <laughs> Melbourne 2004 when I moved here. So the but memory is reawoken. Yeah. But yeah. again, you know, it was sort of really that moment in Dior where with uh, Hedy Slimane and, and sort of it reminds me of the, the slim cut suits, the black. Uh, but it was sort of really obsessed with youth. And I think, you know, yeah. you think of all the young guys that he had on his runway show. He's still obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. But um, I think the fragrances from the era were really representative of that sort of moment, like the sort of blush, like this, the scent of youthful male skin. And I feel like Cologne Blush <laughs> is, is really that moment. It's that sort of powdery blush, sort of, um, I guess, yeah, yeah, like youthful skin, I yeah. feel. And it's very sort of... Uh, uh, tactile there's a, a, an amazing sort of musky veil I think to this fragrance but there's also a reference to the past so you still get the sort of the eau de cologne sort of style um, structure but it's sort of really modernized I think it's uh, I think the word the name cologne blanche is so perfect oh I, I totally agree with you and it's yeah. it was so underrated back in the day of the three that originally came out you know Bois d'Argent, Noir, and Cologne Blanche Cologne Blanche was the least sold yeah but now we know better <laughs> <laughs> and it's back but not like this <laughs> so yeah okay w- w- how different is it to the current version do we have it here no uh, we, we don't i actually smelt it with um liam yesterday for the first time for me it's uh yeah there are some some changes and obviously you know if you're re- releasing a fragrance a, dec- a decade on there's going to be changes in in um you know the raw materials uh use. clayton 20 years later is it oh my God. not a de- yeah are we that old? I know. It, it's so depressing. I also was thinking about it like, oh, it's, well, yeah, 2004. Yeah. 18 years ago. Yeah, wow. Wow. Actually, almost 20 because they were already working on it, 2002, 2003. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, technically 10 years. Yeah. Uh, 20 years. Yeah. So it, it felt to me, uh, and, you know, I guess the other thing when you're smelling vintage juice, um, it, it does sort of change and, and, you know, the maceration is, is sort of, we're talking 20 years later. So I find fragrances sort of compress a little bit and you don't get those sort of uh, crisp peaks and troughs that you do with new juice. So the fragrance that I smelled yesterday, uh, Cologne uh, Blanche, is the new version, but it did feel like it was uh, like all the components set out a little bit more individually as a fragrance. And I don't know if that's a, a, a formulation thing um, or if it's a new juice thing versus a, an older um, juice, but it does feel a little bit different. Sorry. I had a, I had a <laughs> sneaky suspicion they were gonna slightly butcher it. Um, do you think it's due to just well because you know Cologne Blanche used to be a Cologne concentration yeah. now it's eau de parfum, right? Which is so bizarre calling it Cologne, but then being, but then it's it's yeah, but then it's not a Cologne, it's an eau de parfum. So mm-hmm. that alone will probably warrant some sort of change. I think you know. I, I I'm I'm not sure. You, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. You know, with brands and and there's sort of a levels of layers of, you know, whether it's Ifra, whether it's um, uh, having the same access to the same raw materials, whether it's uh, someone going, hmm, how can we make this fragrance more commercially viable in 2022? Let's do some tweaking. Who, who knows? But it definitely. Um, I I think the dry down is is similar from what I smelled yesterday. I still have the strip drying down in in, um, in my hotel room. Um, so I'm going to go back and smell that and sort yeah. of see, and actually now that I have this, I can do a comparison. Um, but it did feel like it ends up in a very similar place. It was just for me the start. had a bit more of a citrus reference, a bit more of a traditional eau de cologne reference mm. um, with the sort of you know aromatic 
I guess, blend of you know going citrus aromatic and then into the the warm base. And I think I mentioned to you uh, before we started recording that reference for me is is also Guerlain's um, Mouchoir de Monsieur. Yeah. Um, sort of that real classical uh, ambery um, fougere sort of style. Yeah, but yeah. Mouchoir de Monsieur doesn't because it was made in the past. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have that dreamy context of something that has no. long gone, which yeah. we have in Cologne Blanche. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I love it so much because it it makes you feel like it, it, it's a glitch in time. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter how old you are or how young you are, when you smell the OG Cologne Blanche, you automatically start reminiscing of youth. Mm-hmm. And that even if you're young, not just if you're old. Uh, so... Uh, Francis, who, he, Francis and Wells did this. I think this was Francis by himself. Uh, him know? alone? So, yeah. So it was only Anik Minado who did uh, Bois de Jean. Wow. Um, for so yeah, I think it was, uh, and obviously this would have been him uh, at Takasago. Um, mm-hmm. So we'd be looking at a Takasago ingredient palette, um, which you know has has a, uh, an impact in terms of the must that they would use, and you know some of the specialty raw materials that Takasago have access to. You know, I was thinking, because, I mean, since Francis did the OG, and, of course, the second he came back to Dior, he's like, hold on, let me, let me bring back what Dimashi deleted. Uh, now, I can throw the shade. He can't. He's professional. <laughs> but, um, so, you're just going to hear me dropping these nuggets. Uh, Clayton, is going to stay, is, Clayton is going to stay very professional. Um, but uh, what I want to say is, um, I, I do, I hand it to Francis, because since Francis is the OG creator of Colon Blanche, I respect the new formulation just because it's him who got his hands on it and for better or for worse, it was his decision to change stuff. Maybe some things he couldn't make a decision to change if he didn't have access to certain ingredients in that particular quality or from that particular, um, uh, what you might call it, uh, manufacturer of the raw ingredient. but. If the same creator revisits his own creation and gives us a, an updated version of it, I'm kind of okay with that more than, let's say, somebody just taking his creation without his you know, knowledge and then just changing it for him or for her. So I guess Colon Blanche under his directorship in the new version is, for me, more acceptable than if he was not involved in the mm-hmm. making of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, artists always evolve. Like 20 years later, maybe he just thought, hey, Cologne Blanche 20 years ago worked for me the way it was back then. Now, 20 years later, I prefer it like this. I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to, to talk to Francis. He's very reclusive these days. So, mm. I think the other thing for me um, about this is that it's so unique to the Dior collection. I mean, it's a, a unique in point yeah. in time, but often when perfumers are working for multiple brands, you sort of see their signature run through, yeah. uh, but this doesn't smell like a Maison Francis Coaching and Fragrance. It I doesn't know. smell like anything he's done for other brands. A little more shade from my end. Um, for me, friends, well, not really shade. It's just, I, I love his perfumes, but for me, his best work is always done for others, not for his own brand. <laughs> Clayton is like, silence. <laughs> I'm just thinking what I, well, I mean, I am, I'm a big fan of Aqua Universalis, but okay. I'm, I'm a bit basic like that. I no, always no, like that's, the... that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly not a Baccarat Rouge fan. Yeah. No, neither am I. I appreciate the, the success that it's had. Yeah. It's We're happy for you, Francis, for your success. <laughs> but yeah, for me, I mean, Le Mal, I mean, I love it. I know it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> big, big controversial issue and topic, Le Mal, but I love it. I love Au Noir. I love Colon Blanche. Um, I actually even love uh, Green Tea. He also did Green Tea. Green Tea. Elizabeth uh, Arden. Oh, right. It's also <laughs> Francis. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Gosh. So he's very, very capable of yeah. taking himself outside of what he wants and he works for the brand and Absolutely. he developed I mean come on green tea is a huge success mm-hmm. still today yeah. one of the perfume reviews on my channel that gets the most views really wow go figure and it's by far not my favorite perfume but mm-hmm. it's just people love it yeah 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 interesting I think the other thing as well like thinking back to the time of um, Hedy Slaman at Dior everything was black white and you know sort of some some neutral shades in between but for me this was like the white shirt it was like the Dior uniform. It was, you know, the, the white shirt with the thin collar 
and the bee emblem on the um, motif on the side. And for me, that was that's really this fragrance. Yeah, um, it's definitely also what for Chanel is uh, Eau de Cologne. Sure. From there, Les Exclusives, which is also a beautiful Cologne. Yes. Yeah. It has that powdery touch at the bottom. It yeah. has that little bit of a vanilla there. Yes titillating at mm -hmm. the dry. I love Chanel's Eau de Cologne, yeah. which is kind of, has a little bit of similarity with this. There's a certain similar warmth to both of them, mm -hmm. even though they're obviously different. But. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and the black and white, of course, that's why we had the Cologne Blanche. He made mm -hmm. the white, and then he made the Eau Noir, the black. Yeah, which is the suit, and it's like, yeah. I guess, you know, like for me, I, mean, I know we, we haven't explored the Celine fragrances together that um, Hedy's put together, but uh, that idea of like night clubbing, which is one of the names of one of his fragrances, um, which for me is sort of, again, that idea of like nocturnal versus sort of um, daytime fragrances. There's, there's that real divide in the Celine collection as well. So... We should go there next. We need Celine, <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, this was a little, I guess, Cologne Blanche talk uh, with Clayton. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, where can we find you on social media and follow you? Oh, um, so I'm just on Instagram. Very, very basic. Clayton uh, Ilula here is my name. And I think there's an underscore. Is there? Okay. I, I'm I, I such a bad remember. marketer for myself. <laughs> no, don't worry, guys. I'm going to post a link okay. to Clayton's Instagram okay. underneath yeah, this video. So You'll go, go follow him on Instagram. He's amazing. Yeah, thank Clayton, thank you so much thank you. for joining and us. Thank you. to see you in Australia. Down and down. <laughs> so, yeah, mate. <laughs> and uh, you guys, um, well, I'm a little bit wasted because we just had the premiere of Art Lovers Unite yesterday. There's been partying and drinking, so my apologies for my b bloated uh, blobness, but I'm still focused. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe and never give up on love. Bye. Bye.